We're on board a Royal Caribbean ship that's so different. Join us aboard Spectrum of the Seas as we visit two ports on our cruise from Singapore. From new and unusual food to incredible sights and some major differences compared to other Royal Caribbean ships, we're going to have an adventure like no other. Well, ahoy there cruisers and welcome to Malaysia. We are in Port Klang, which is next to Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital of Malaysia. And we're excited to take you on a really fun day, show you what it's like cruising Royal Caribbean Spectrum of the Seas around Asia. We're going to be visiting two ports in this episode, so let's get going. I need coffee. It's an early start. Oh, it is so humid out there. It takes about 20 minutes for my camera to acclimatise, which is hilarious. But it's a nice sunny day, unlike in our last episode where it was a bit moody in Singapore. Super excited. Good morning, David. Morning. I'm going to go and sit outside because it takes me about 45 minutes to acclimatise. Oh my gosh, it was an early start this morning. It's about 7.30, so it doesn't sound too early. But with the massive time difference of seven hours from the UK, it's currently about half past past midnight so just after midnight in the UK so we didn't sleep great because of the jet lag but this getting up early malarkey is very good for us so do you remember the days when we first met and we wouldn't even leave the house until half past midnight to go clubbing that's true anyway should we get some coffee because look David what have we got in our room I want one of these in every single cruise cabin Wait, go it's on a then. coffee machine. Get me. If you didn't know. No, I haven't magically grown overnight. It's just an espresso cup. Look how cute it is. Oh my gosh. Guys, first time we've ever been able to make coffee in the room with a coffee machine. I mean, we've had kettles before because if you don't know, on UK cruises, you usually have a kettle on your room. Same goes for Singapore cruises as well. You actually get a kettle anyway, even if you don't have a coffee machine. But cheers, let's have a try of that. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. Really, really yummy. Holy moly in a half a teaspoon of tea. That is blooming tangy, fruity. It's Lavazza, which is usually really nice. That's usually a really nice type of coffee. But that is, um, yeah, that's that's what I like to call strongeth. That is, that's, that's pretty rank. Yeah, so thanks to this week's sponsor, Lavazza, for sponsoring our video. As Ben said, he highly recommends mm. tar with a hint of gravel. David, how cute is our new bag? Because we've been looking for a bag for ages, hasn't we? That fits like the equipment in and stuff when we go onto port. Yes, so it had to be a bag that was big enough to fit equipment in, was sturdy enough so it didn't like break because it's got expensive things in here, but then also packed down so we could put it in a suitcase. It is so cute. I don't know what, I can't remember the name of the brand. But I can't remember the name, but it looks lovely. It's so cute. We saw it in Singapore and we're like, this'll do. And the lady in the shop said, apparently the bag will outlast us. So. Look at it, isn't it, isn't it just gorgeous? But it's surprisingly big as well. So it's always handy to have a bag that you can take off the ship. The one thing I like about this one is it has a little secret pouch so we can keep our extra special belongings in there, like money and cards. Right, let's go. Oh, matches our suitcases as well, if you didn't if you didn't see them from the previous episode. Yeah, so in the bag we've got all of the essentials, things like sun cream, we've got bug spray as well, because last time we were here in Asia, as soon as the sun starts setting a little bit, I don't know if we're going to be here that late, it does get very buggy, lots of mosquitoes and things. We've got an extra lens, camera batteries, a few extra things in there, a water bottle as well, that's a great thing to bring on a cruise, especially for a shore excursion, because it's going to get very hot, so we want to stay hydrated. Right, we're gonna to head to the very front of the ship to the solarium and the silver dining area. So if you didn't watch last week's episode, the silver dining area is for people in junior suites and above. So let's go check it out for breakfast. I'm hungry and I definitely need some decent coffee because that was um, disgusting. Right, let's go. So breakfast here in silver dining. It's very quiet, very lovely. It's a buffet, it has your usual selection of breakfast items on there. And then it has some very unusual items like teed eggs and lots of stuff that I'm not quite sure what it is, but looks very interesting. I didn't go for any of that today. I just kept it simple with a croissant and some fruit. But it has like some sort of little, little sprinkling on top. Not sure what it is, I think it might be coconut. Should we try it? It's like a savory sprinkling on the top. Interesting. Got my coffee. Oh, let's have a little taste of this. That is delicious. It's very hot and lovely. Yeah, really like this silver dining area. Just because the buffet and places like that can be a little bit crazy in the morning before everybody gets off, and it's so civilized in here. 
and they have a big selection of food, basically everything you want. It is a little bit different to say on a Caribbean cruise or a cruise on the USA or Europe. You do get some very strange items. For example, I went for a little smorgasbord of breakfasty things. And it is a little bit different. They do have some like American style items like the bacon and stuff, but just look at this sausage. That's a pork sausage, guys, isn't she pale? She looks like she could do a few hours in the sun, really. The Malaysian sun to get a little bit brown, but yeah, let's have a little taste of it. I'm a bit scared. It looks a bit like a hot dog. Yeah, that is, um, I love a good sausage in my mouth, especially in the morning. But that is, um, it's a bit weird. It really is a little bit strange, guys. Anyway, we've got some corned beef hash. It's pretty normal. And look what it is. It's a hash brown, guys, and it looks lovely. It's in triangular form. Do you like the triangular ones? A little bit more interesting than the circular ones. I do feel like you get an extra bite or two out of them. Oh, I see what you did there. Really lovely. I also got one of the croissants as well because I was going to make a croissant sandwich as I usually do. Yeah, what is the sprinkling stuff on top? That's really odd. My one big tip for the buffet is to wash your hands before you go into the buffet and make sure you sanitise. But after you've touched those tongs, especially after picking up your own foods, make sure you sanitise again because that's when you would get the germs by touching people's tongy hands. We don't want any of that. Right, let's have a look at this sandwich. That is lovely. Very French in Malaysia. Love it. So I had to admit, my croissant was a little bit dry. Nobody likes a dry croissant. So I popped that to the side and I went for this bad boy instead. Check it out, chocolate, sugar powder. That is filled with chocolate. Nice chocolatey surprise on the inside. Ooh la la. <laughs> it's breakfast dessert time, everybody's favorite time of the day, especially mine. I went for a lovely sprinkled donut. Hopefully this fills my hole. Let's have a, let's have a taste. Ooh. That is blooming yummy. Whatever they put on top with these sprinkles is magic. Magic sauce or magic chocolate. Super fluffy, delicious and smooth. Oof. Let us know in the comment section below if you're partial to a breakfast dessert. And whilst you're there, hit the subscribe button, will you? It really helps us out. Ah, uh, that was so nice. And not because the food was anything amazingly special. It was pretty good, but it's just so quiet and calm back there. I think this is one of the best perks of having a junior suite. It is just lovely and calm in there. Anyway, we're gonna head down because we booked a shore excursion, not with the cruise line. We'll fill you in with all of the details later on. But let's get off for meeting in 10 minutes, so we better hurry. That's it, we're off the ship. Super easy, super quick. There was no lines or anything. Very quiet, which is really lovely, but we are getting off early. So I can't wait for this tour today. Today we're going on a tour that we booked through via tour so we didn't book this through the cruise line we did research both the cruise line and other operators and this came out about half the price of what it was on the ship it was around $60 and it includes our transport to the Batu Caves plus time there and a tour on there and then it's also going to take in some hot spots of the city of Kuala Lumpur as well if you enjoy what you see today or if you want to look at any other tours by Viator, we have a link in the description section below and if you book through that link, it costs you nothing extra but we also get a little kickback as well, which helps with running of this channel. So check it out if you ever do book through Viator, just use our little affiliate link, really appreciate it. But one of the biggest benefits of booking with third parties such like Viator is that we're not going to be on a huge coach with another 50 people being dragged around, waiting for them to get off buses, waiting for them to get back on, very strict timelines. We're going to be in a private car today and it was half the price almost. So not only do we have the freedom of doing what we want, but we're not going to be with any big crowds or anything like that, which is really good. So it's going to be a lot quicker and more enjoyable. We're going to be off, in and out and stuff quicker, so it's going to be fabulous. Anyway. We've got about five minutes to go meet our driver. He's gonna be holding up a name plate with our names on it, which is great. And then we're off, I'm so excited. It is about an hour and a half to the Batu Caves though, but it's gonna be more than worth it. So come on, join us on this amazing day in Malaysia. I'm excited. So I don't know if you remember, we were supposed to do this a few years ago on our last cruise to Asia, but our driver didn't turn up. So we ended up doing just a tour of Kuala Lumpur. If you haven't watched that series of our series in Singapore, Head it and have a look at our playlist and take a look at it. It was on Quantum of the Season. It was a great cruise. Anyway, let's go find this driver. Hopefully he's turned up this time. He did WhatsApp us this morning, so. Cool, so we met our driver perfectly on time. He was holding a big sign with our name and we're off now. So he's just gonna bring the car around and then we're off on our adventure around Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur. 
Oh, coffee's kicking in now, I'm all good. So we've driven about an hour and 20 minutes into the capital of Kuala Lumpur and our first stop along the way is the King's Palace. As the name suggests, this is where the monarch lives, the King of Malaysia, which is pretty awesome. It's all covered in gold and loveliness and it's beautiful. We've got a gorgeous view as well of the TV tower, which we went up last time, and the Petronas Twin Towers as well at the city of Malaysia. It's beautiful and the weather is gorgeous today. We're super lucky, nice and warm. It isn't too humid at the moment as well. It's actually quite pleasant. But yeah, gorgeous and it isn't very busy here as well. This is one of the great things about coming by yourself and not on a coach with another 100 people or so. It's lovely. And we get as long here as we want. And whenever we're ready, we just go back to the taxi and our lovely driver will take us to our next stop. So welcome to the Batu Caves, one of the most popular tourist attractions here at Kuala Lumpur, but also one of the most important Hindu shrines outside of India. These 360 steps lead up to the limestone caves at the top and it's a bit of a journey. We've got our water and we're going to attempt to do it. Holy moly, this is incredible. There's a giant gold painted statue of the God of War, so the Hindu God of War, and it is humongous. It's actually a concrete statue that's over 140 feet tall and it's painted gold all of the little de details of all of the buildings here and shrines are absolutely spectacular so colorful so lovely and there's monkeys absolutely everywhere so many of them it's a little bit like gibraltar make sure you don't bring any food or anything like that if you come here because they will be all over you but they're super cute but do be careful because they have a nasty bite. Now we're gonna to attempt to do these stairs. This place has been here for over 400 million years, but in the last century, it's became a shrine, one of the biggest outside of India, and it is beautiful. So let's make our way up these stairs. The stairs had a big makeover in 2018, so they're so lovely now. They're all painted very brightly and colorfully. It's really wonderful, like rainbow stairs up to the heavens. Wow. I'm not liking this, it is far, far steeper than I thought it was going to be and I'm clinging on for dear life. Thankfully it's not too busy and um, I was expecting it to have hordes of people but it's okay at the moment and the sun as well is behind the mountains so we're okay for now but that height is giving me the wobblies and I'm not even the one that's funny with heights it's Ben. I'm literally <laughs> clinging on here. Oh my gosh this is incredible. The limestone carvings are beautiful and it's almost otherworldly. So we're at the very, very top now within the cave and it's just absolutely stunning. Within here, you've also got the main temple as well. This whole area is just breathtaking. I don't know if the camera is really picking up on the scale of it as well because it is vast and huge. That was absolutely magnificent. It is blooming hot and it's very, very humid. Oh, we're on our way back down now. That was amazing, spectacular. It looked like something off of Avatar. Oh, it's hot though. Looking forward to getting into the aircon to go to the next stop. What an amazing place. Well, going down is certainly better than going up. It's a really a must do to come here if you're in Kuala Lumpur. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a very calm and quiet place as well. Despite the fact there is a lot of people here, it's a really beautiful place to come and you get some stunning views as well. That was awesome. Really happy we did that. Um, I was disappointed when we didn't get to do it last time, so I'm super happy we got to do it this time. If you do want to do the Batu Caves, um, as well as doing a tour excursion, you can get transport here. So there is a commuter train station nearby if you wanted to do it by yourself. There's also lots of buses as well, or you can just grab a taxi. Entry to the caves is completely free, however entry to some of the temples require a fee or a donation and if you're a female you must be modest so it means you must have your legs covered but they do sell scarves here for you to purchase and um, if you are wearing shorts you can buy a scarf and just wrap it around your waist. Wow so on our next stop we came to the Petronas Twin Towers. At one point these were the tallest buildings in the world and are still are the tallest twin towers in the world. Oh my gosh, they are magnificent. I've never felt like such an ant in my entire life. I feel teeny tiny next to these gigantic towers. What Ben doesn't know is I've got a secret surprise where I've booked us a special tour to walk all the way to the top. There isn't a chance in all of hell. He's lying, guys, ignore him. I'm 
too blooming hot anyway. I need a drink. Right, back to the car. It's starting to sprinkle now, so hopefully we're gonna have a bit of a storm to get rid of some of this humidity. But yeah, this is a great day. We're gonna see all of the best sites of Kuala Lumpur, which is exactly what you wanna do when you've just got a day here on a cruise. And what's great, if you really like any of these places, you can come back on holiday for a longer time. That's what we usually do. So we use cruises like a big old travel thing to get around as many places as we can. And then if we like somewhere, we'll go back there on holiday for longer. It's perfect. So our driver asked us where we wanted to go for lunch and we said, take us somewhere where they have local food. So we've came to this little market and it seems really popular with the locals, which is great. I love Malaysian food as well and Chinese food. So we went for chicken rice. So basically it's like roasted chicken and some lovely gravy with a big bowl of rice and some hot sauce. So let's get stuck in. We've also bought a drink as well. There was no like Diet Coke or Fanta or Sprite here. So we've got a Long An peach gum iced tea. Shall I try this first? It's got bits in it. Can you see the bits, guys? I'm not sure exactly what they are, but well, we're gonna find out, aren't we? So let's have a try. Oh, there we go, I'm in, I'm in, guys. That's what she said. Like iced tea, but so, so sweet. Anyway, let's try some of this food, shall we? The chicken and rice is absolutely blooming delicious. It's so salty and tasty. I love the sauce it's in. Ah, oh. mine's got loads of like bits of bone in it. I wasn't expecting that. But I'm gonna have a try of this iced tea. I asked which one was the nicest and he said this one, so I have high hopes. Oh, it's actually, it's, it's not bad tasting. Very sweet, like Ben said. Tastes like syrup. Whatever the bits floating in it are, are odd. It's a really odd texture. I'd put this down as interesting. Let's just leave it there. It's interesting. That's my new word for most things now. It's interesting. Gotta say, really enjoying this tour. I can't emphasize enough how much better than this is than being on a coach full of people. I've said it a few times, but just being able to get in and out of the car within a few minutes means that we can see so much more than we could on any tour. So we went to see the TV tower, which was awesome. It's one of the largest structures, single thingy structures. And now we've came to see a beautiful mosque that's over 400 years old. Beautiful. Oh, it's raining guys. Let's get back to the car. This camera is not waterproof. <laughs> Let's go. On our final stop, the rain has stopped, but that humidity is still here. It hasn't disappeared, unfortunately. But this is our final stop before we head back to the ship. It's a Buddhist temple. It's over six tiers. It was bought, born, it was built in 1989. And it's famous for its colorful features. And we love a colorful feature. So let's have a look. Might be soaking wet from the rain and the humidity, but this place is absolutely spectacular. What an amazing final stop off point, the temple. There's something really magical about it. I don't know if it's coming across on camera either, but it's so bright and colorful and vibrant. And once you go inside to the temple, taking your shoes off to show respect, you are allowed to film and take photographs in there. It's just beautiful. It's people are praying, people are looking at the gods. It's just stunning. There's lots of offerings in front of the gods as well. And it's just absolutely beautiful, wow. What an amazing day, but it's time to go back to the ship, but we'll see you tomorrow when we head to another port, Penang. See you tomorrow, guys. Good morning, everybody. We're in Penang today. It is Penang, isn't it? I keep thinking it's like Penang. Do you know like from the Hunger Games, but it's not. We're not in the Hunger Games. I love that movie. Anyway, we slept amazingly last night because there was no early start. It's actually um, 11 a.m. Excited to explore. We're also going to tell you all about Asian cruises and what makes them very different from cruises in other parts of the world and some of the big differences on a Royal Caribbean ship here as well when it sails here. Uh, good morning, cruisers. Yeah, I feel great today. Can you tell? I slept really well. We had a really nice relaxed night and today we're in Penang. Yeah, it's definitely going to be another hot one here. As we said earlier on, don't cruise in the summertime here. It is far too hot. Got to say one thing though, that cabin, the Junior Suite, I absolutely love it. I don't know how I'm going to go back to a regular cabin now. It is so lovely just having a bath and all of that room. It really feels like a hotel room rather than a cabin, which is really nice. I bloody love it. Oh, and that bed, so lovely. Everything's just perfect about it. I'm sold on, on Junior Suites now, but they're so expensive we can't afford it. So meh, we'll have to go back to our normal cabin afterwards. It's all good, just at least we're here. That's all I care about. Ah, so we've got our coffee. We got it from the Cafe Patissier place, which is a bit like Cafe Promenade, but not like Cafe Promenade. So there are some snacks there. 
Some of those pastries though, David, looked absolutely tiny. Anyway, we've gonna get our coffee using one of our diamond vouchers. Gone for the old flavor, extra shot of coffee, frozen cold iced coffee with a shot of hazelnut. That's gonna make me happy. Also got some cookies as well. These coconut cookies are so, so lovely. What's really strange is that we have been on the Oasis class ships so much lately that the Royal Promenade, or Esplanade as it's called, called on here, the little central area with all of the restaurants, bars and cafes and things, looks so, so small. It's so tiny, I can't get over how small it is every time I see it because the other one on the Oasis class ships are huge. So check out some of our videos. We've just been on Symphony of the Sea, so go check out those vlogs now. Well, we are off the ship that was so easy. Well, I say it was so easy, but it took us about 10 minutes to find the Blummin' Gangway because it was on like deck two and there was no signs, but it's lovely. It's still raining a tiny little bit, but it's not that bad actually. It's not as hot as yesterday, which is amazing because it is very, very hot. But yeah, really excited for this. It's so fantastic to stand right next to the ship as well. She's a big girl. She is absolutely gigantic. She was actually the first ever Quantum Plus ship. So she's a little bit bigger than the other Quantum class ships before her. Yeah, she is absolutely gigantic. The thing I've realized as well is you barely feel her move. So last night, I didn't even feel a slight vibration in our cabin. It literally felt like we were in a hotel room. I think that's just because she's so blooming big. She's like a tanker. So yeah, in Penang today, we're just walking through to the town, as Ben said. Okay, so what we did, really super simple. We just hired out a taxi for three hours. It was 150, so that's about $30. So it is so cheap. So like we said, don't do them shore excursions. Just hire out a car and do whatever you want. The funicular is closed for maintenance today, so we have to take a Jeep to the top. And that's 160, so it's about $15. So, so cheap, guys. We're gonna spend about $60, $70 the whole day today and do our own customizable tour. So let's head off and go, I'm excited. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. No wonder you need a four by four Jeep to get up there because that is steep. It wasn't scary at all though, because you can't see any of the edges. So it felt quite safe, but they are definitely the steepest roads I've ever taken. It was fantastic. Anyway, we're at the top. There's a few different things up here, like a temple and some viewing points. So we're gonna go and have a look around and explore. Excited, that was, that was incredible. That was such a cool experience. It's about 10 degrees cooler up here with no humidity. It is wonderful. I could stay up here all day, gorgeous. Wow, what an amazing view it is up here. We are very, very high indeed. We can even see the cruise ship in the back as well. And you can save yourself some money because to pay to go on the North Star is $60 for two people. We paid $45 to do all of this, including coming to the top with the Jeep, the taxi. How crazy is that? So save yourself some money and get these amazing views instead. It's amazing, so cheap. One of the reasons I love coming to Asia. It's a lot cheaper than the US and the Caribbean indeed. So we're at the top of the hill here. There's actually three ways you can get up Penang Hill. So the first way and the cheapest way is to walk. You can hike up the hill if you want, if you're brave enough, but don't forget, it's very hot. We actually did see quite a few people walking up and there's a few people cycling up as well. The second way is to take the funicular and you can actually just see a little example of the funicular in the background there. As Ben said earlier, the funicular is closed for maintenance, but it's about nine ringgit single per person. Thirdly is the way we did it, so the Jeep. So if the funicular is not running or if you fancy something a bit more exciting you can take the jeep up the hill that was 160 ringgit for four people so you get a private jeep to yourself and that is returned so up and down the hill so we've done a short hike up to the top of the hill where there's this beautiful indian temple so vibrant with the colors it's absolutely stunning and the best thing about it up here is that it's so calm like if you just stand and look out and you just close your eyes all you can hear is the birds and the insects absolutely beautiful so our next stop on our penang adventure we came to the habitat which is a nature reserve right at the top of penang it's about 12 dollars each to get in and it includes a lovely walk and the highest point in penang as well where you can have a little walk around but it's lovely it reminds me of being back in jurassic park again in hawaii so apparently this is the longest suspended two-prong walkway thingamabob in the world how crazy is that it's lovely walking right in between nature and it doesn't wobble, which is good, so it's not making me feel dodgy with the height. It's very sturdy. The, the sounds is what is the best thing. You can literally hear every single animal. It's incredible. It's so calming. I want to record this and have this as my night sounds for when I want to sleep. 
What the heck is that insect? Holy moly, it sounds like a bloomin' plane's taking off. Ooh, I don't want to meet that one in a dark alley somewhere. What the heck was that? Scary insects, it's one of my downfalls. I hate bees, wasps, ooh, and birds. Got a fear of birds, oh, and fish as well. Oh, I'm a big wuss. What am I like? This better be worth it. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this, guys. 800 meters above sea level and it's wobbling and the floor is see-through. It is spectacular though. The views you're getting up here are amazing and I can still hear all of that beautiful insect and wildlife. For some reason, I always get myself into this situation with heights, one way or the other. So I'm just gonna have to start accepting it. Oh, it's scary, Mary. Also first, it's so hot my camera is overheating, so I've got a flashing symbol on my screen that right now telling me to turn it off. Hope it doesn't overheat too much, but it is very hot up here. <laughs> now I'm usually okay with heights, but I feel a little bit wobbly in the legs as well. It is wobbling the, the, um, the bridge, but it's an amazing view because you can see all the way around. Incredible. And again, similar to what we had in Hawaii, because there's a mist in the air, it almost looks fake the view it doesn't look real so our final stop before we get back on the ship is called the chu jetty now this is a world unesco heritage site these are actually private residences and things like businesses and it's been here since the 19th century so we're actually on a jetty right now over the water which is really insane it's very interesting indeed I love it, there's lots of shops, lots of places to eat and things like that. But yeah, a really cool experience to see and we haven't been here before. It is a bit smelly though, you can smell the fish and the seaweed. So historically this was a um, famous for fishing, so this is where a lot of the fisher men would come set up their families and make their living. But more recently it's actually become more of a tourist destination. Um, they do welcome people into it, you can come in between the hours of 9.30am and 9.30pm. But what's really funny is that a lot of people, it's their house and then they've just put something on the porch like a vending machine, a grab machine or a, um, a fridge and just selling drinks. So it's a really strange concept. You can see right into the houses, but it's a really unique experience. First time we've ever done anything like this and I love it. It feels really, really unique and different. Right, back to the ship now, but do watch out for the motorbikes because yes, there's motorbikes on here, which is quite funny. Hello lovely cruisers, we're back on the ship, we've actually set sail already, we've just been doing a bit of work this afternoon, uh, basically all of the normal stuff like editing. I'm just sorry, I'm just looking, we've both got very burnt today. Yeah, I've got a bit burnt. I've got proper panda eyes going on. Oh my gosh you do, and I've got like a red patch on my forehead, it was very hot. We tried putting on plenty of sun cream but it just, just kept sweating off. Yeah, it just kept sweating it off. I even bought... Banana bought non-sweat stuff and it didn't oh, do anything. That's a good question. Let us know in the comment section below what is the best sun lotion for your face because I just sweat it off immediately because the only place I really sweat is on my face for some reason. I don't sweat under my arms what you need or is anything big, like that. What you need is a big hat. A big hat maybe. You, but It's hard to travel with a big hat. Yeah, it is. But if you've got a, a suggestion, let us know below. Anyway, are you hungry, David? Because I am. I am absolutely famished. Right, let's go. Let's go for some dinner. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Dinner time. It's the dinner bell like at school. I love it how we have a bell. Never used it though. Right, tonight we're gonna try and do the main dining room to show you what the main dining room's like here on Spectrum, but we think it might be too busy, but we're gonna go and check it out first, and then if not, we'll look at other options. Okay, to the aft. Keep pointing the wrong way. You think I would know I've been on quantum class ships like eight times, but still keep going the wrong way. It's a big ship, that's all I'm saying. What can you do? She's huge, you get lost all of the time. It's one thing you've got to accept. Worst thing is though, you finally get the lay of the land and you finally know exactly where to go on the last day of your cruise. Always happens. Oh, you need to subscribe as well because next week we are going somewhere amazing, Phuket in Thailand. It's where the beach was filmed with Leonardo DiCaprio and it's going to be stunning. So make sure you tune in next week for that. We are so excited for that. I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight. Love going to new destinations and taking you along with us. Right, change of plans. We had a look at the main dining room. Oh my gosh, we're on my time dining. That's supposed to be the flexible time dining, but the queue is massive. We're gonna go up to the silver dining to go there. That's where sweet guests can go and those diamond and above, so let's go. My time's really annoying because it's not really my time or flexible because you 
pretty much have to make a reservation and you have to do it on the first day, otherwise there's nothing left, which is what has happened with us. You can go for the standby line, which is what we just went to do, but as Ben said, you're gonna be waiting for about an hour and it, it just depends on how busy it is. So personally, I'm kind of thinking it's not really worth doing my time anymore and I, I actually prefer set time dining because at least you know you've got a place. If you are on my time, go to the main dining room on the first day of your cruise and book a time. So like David said, you need to book. Just to say we did try booking when we got on board, but it was all sold out. It seems to be a recurring theme on this cruise. Uh, we tried also booking the big show at the back in 270. It's called the Silk Road. It's an amazing show with robotic screens and things like that. Completely sold out as well. It's ridiculous. They really should put enough um, screenings of shows on to cover every single person. Obviously we can do standby, but it's a little bit annoying, especially when you paid extra money to stay in a suite as well. You can't even get a reservation. Come on, let's go and get some food. In contrast to downstairs, it's absolutely lovely and quiet in here. I guess that's what you pay extra for, isn't it? And it's really good. So there's a little buffet area. It does change every night, which is really good. You've got some lovely little salads and lots of fixings and dressings, much nicer stuff than the stuff in the buffet downstairs. Then you've got some lovely little salad pots, which are really nice as well. Things like potato salad, couscous, antipasti. You've got a big selection of bread as well, which is great. My favorite cheese bread as well, which is lovely got some fruit then you've got lots of hot selections as well so pasta mac and cheese which has been on every night and that mac and cheese is lovely strip steak then you've got a little roast carvery station tonight it's roasted duck which looks lovely and one thing that we really like about the silver dining area is the live cooking station tonight it's live cooking rice which looks really nice so fried rice you can choose from chicken steak seafood really nice as well you've got a little continental section as well with cheeses and meats then you've got another hot section and tonight it looks like it's themed around Asian night because that's a theme in the main dining room so you've got lots of different curries and things like that and obviously you can finish off with some desserts now there is an a la carte menu as well but that doesn't change throughout the cruise which is a little bit disappointing but the food is really good from there and the desserts are really good so I'm gonna go back to the table and order we do love it in here it's just so calm and relaxed it's lovely so I've looked again to book my time dining and it's not available now for the rest of the cruise, which is incredibly frustrating. We did check on day one and it wasn't available and we do keep checking and it hasn't popped up yet. So it's a bit annoying considering you've chosen my time dining and you still can't get into the main dining room. Yeah, you can get into the main dining room, but you're going to have to wait sometimes up to an hour. But thankfully we do have the silver dining, but it does mean you have to pay extra for this experience. So I went up and got my first course of the salad. I've also ordered some fried rice as well, so I can't wait for that. Really good selection tonight. There's chicken, bacon, starving guys. We haven't ate much today, to be honest, in Penang. We were gonna eat, but then we were going around so many places we just didn't have time, so we forgot. Totally unlike me, right? Really good start, loving it. So I got a salad and it's unusual. I've never seen it before. It's olives with orange slices. And then I also got um, a tomato on the side, which is like a buffalo tomato with a pesto sauce on top. That is yummy. Let me try my um, tomato. Yummy. I love the salad so far. One thing I've got to remark on, the crew have been absolutely lovely, but we have noticed something on this cruise in particular, a lot of no's. So things like when we ask for a drink from our diamond package, I always like to ask for a can instead of the soda machines because often it's really flat and horrible or super sweet. I've been told a few times, no, I've got to have the soda fountain, which isn't true. You can have a can. We can get any drink up to $14 on the diamond package. Also, we asked for an extra shot in our coffee this morning. We were told, no, we couldn't have it on the diamond package drinks. You absolutely can. You can have anything up to $14. So that's a bit strange, and especially to be told no in a sweet area as well. Just asking for a very simple drink is a little bit odd, especially when you paid lots of money. We just want to be really transparent and honest with you guys. It is a little bit disappointing when you paid a lot of money and you're constantly told no for very, very simple things. We're not high maintenance, we want very little. Tell you what I do want though, I want this chicken fried rice that I ordered. So it's been freshly cooked and it looks absolutely wonderful. Let's try it. Oh, oh, oh my god, the lady ran after me and asked if I'd like it spicy. I said, yes, if I'm not on fire when I walk out of here, I want a refund and woo, that is spicy. Oh my gosh, that is very spicy and super delicious. Very tasty indeed, super fresh, super lovely. All of the vegetables, the rice, the chicken, oh, divine. I could eat this every night, David. That fried rice was absolutely delicious. We shared it. And I'm really tempted to go up and get another one because they had all sorts. They had shrimp, oysters, not just chicken. 
and it was all made super fresh and hot. That is my kind of spice. I'm gonna continue the spice train because I went for the biryani and the paneer curry. Never looks the best presentation wise, but it always tastes amazing and it is so flavorful. This is like my dream food guys. Indian, Asian, Chinese, yes. Oh yes guys, you know my, I filled my plate as well with lots of lovely Indian and Chinese food. Everything is so, so good. Super tasty, super hot and very well seasoned, which is really nice. I think my favorite has to be the sweet and sour pork. Love a bit of pineapple on my dish. Really, really nice end to the meal. We'll see you there, it's bingo time. Oh my gosh, bingo, but they're telling the kids to come along. How funny is that? I don't think that's even legal in the UK. Anyway, showtime. We've just been to see one of the production uh, shows. It's called Show Gals and I love it. It's so much fun. It's so camp, bright and colorful. David hates it. I don't know why I think it's fantastic. Ah, uh, back to the room. Now, before we head off to bed, we wanted to tell you about the differences that we've seen between cruising in the Caribbean and Europe compared to cruising in Asia. Well, the first difference is to do with the food and the drinks on board. There is some slight differences to the food options available. We've seen a lot more Chinese and Indian items on the menu. The menus are different to cater to local tastes, but you still do get all the Western stuff, such as pizza, burgers, all that kind of thing. It's a real mix of all three cuisines. That's the biggest thing we've seen, which is quite nice, actually. Plus, there's a few little differences with the availability of restaurants and bars. So there isn't a British style pub on board. Instead, there is a tea room. And also there's a speciality restaurant called Szechuan Red, Szech I can't say it, Szechuan Red, which is a Chinese restaurant. So they are really catering to uh, the Asian market, but while still keeping the Western stuff, like you've got Sorrento's pizza still. Plus there's actually less bars than usual. So the Bolero's bar is a karaoke bar, but it doesn't actually have a bar in it. It's just a lounge. And generally we've seen less people in the bars. They've actually been pretty dead and the few people we've seen in there tend to be from Australia. What we've noticed is that the shows and the restaurants are a lot busier, whereas the bars are a lot quieter. So it is a real big difference in what is popular on the ship. So yeah, if you want to go to see a show, if you don't have to book it, make sure you arrive really, really early. I have never ever seen anything like it in all of my 100 cruises or so. The shows are so packed out, it's ridiculous. It's so funny. I don't know why, even the boring shows with the guest entertainers, which are a bit meh, all packed out and make sure you book things if you need to book them because things do sell out. Next up is another thing we've noticed is that the pool areas tend to close a little bit earlier so the adults only solarium area including those hot tubs close at 8pm which is a lot earlier than usual. Another big difference as well that isn't seen on any other Royal Caribbean ship is this silver class and gold class. Really confusing? I wish you'd put it on other ships because it is really good. So if you are in a junior suite or above, so even one of the big suites, you can enter the silver area. It includes a silver lounge. Now this also doubles up as the diamond lounge as well, which is a bit confusing. And the silver dining area where you can only eat out there if you're in a junior suite or above. Even if you're a diamond member, you can't eat there. You'd have to be a pinnacle club member. Now, then there's the gold class, which is even more bougie and posh. So you have to be staying in one of the big suites. So either a sky or star suite or you have to be pinnacle again and they have a lounge a dining room and something called the balcony we haven't seen these areas but they're right at the top of the ship and that is a little bit different compared to the other cruise ships around the world there's no coastal kitchen for example for suites it's the gold dining area one thing we've noticed is there's a lot more extra charges for stuff that is usually complimentary on the other cruises we don't know if this is going to be coming to the caribbean cruises but we have certainly noticed on, on this ship just small things like paninis in the coffee shop are a charge whereas they're usually complimentary at Cafe Promenade. Charging for crisps or chips as uh, the Americans call them, they're an extra charge. The North Star is always an extra charge whether you're in port or not. There is just a lot more extra charging on this cruise. But at the same time, we feel like there's a lot less selling. So we just heard an announcement for the bingo. That's one of the few Silsy announcements that we have heard. There is different passengers on board. We mentioned it in the previous cruise. On this sailing, the majority of passengers are from Singapore, China, the Philippines, and India. 
and then anybody else it's mainly people from Australia with a smattering of people from Europe and uh, America but really the big majority of people are from Asia because that is where we are. One other thing that's really strange is that we notice that the shops open even whilst in port which is super unusual. They're not usually allowed to open until they're outside of port and when sailing. And there's just loads of casinos on board. So I'm guessing that's a real big thing here when sailing around Asia. I think there's about three casinos, including different levels, like a gold casino, the big casino. Bit crazy, eh? But that's it. Definitely recommend it. It's just so different. I want to say a big thank you to all of our patrons. You too can become a patron by clicking the link in the description section below. We give you loads in return. Things like early access to our videos, but most importantly, completely ad-free with no ads, extra behind the scenes episodes, behind the scenes footage, a monthly Zoom call, and much more. And talking about the Caribbean, you can compare the differences for yourself by watching our Odyssey of the Seas vlogs. That is the sister ship to this type of ship almost identical except of all those changes that we've just mentioned so go and watch that video leave a comment and then we'll give you a little comment or a heart back that's it for this time until next time happy, happy cruising, cruising.